Hey guys, uh, I was just looking at my, I probably need to shave before I tell a story. Maybe put on nicer clothes. Ah, what the heck? <laughs> just a story, right? A true story. Uh, really don't know exactly how to start this thing. I guess it's kind of a lifelong story of uh, things we did, things we love to do things that I don't do no more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of you say, oh, to turn it off, turn it off. Coon hunting. East Texas is big in coon hunting, or used to be. I grew up coon hunting. Yeah, coon's just a slang for raccoon. But I never heard anybody say, I'm a raccoon hunter. You know? It's always, I'm a coon hunter. You see signs on people's trucks. Coon hunter, or you see these rifle racks in the back of their, up by their back, one of their trucks, rifle racks, and they belong to some kind of coon hunting association. You know, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Sit down. If you want to listen to the story, good sit down. I'm not going to tolerate little goats bouncing when I'm trying to tell a story. I won't do it. Uh, it, it goes way back when I was a kid. Okay, and I'm, I'm not going to try to let, make a story last too long, but it's kind of going to be hard to get it all out without lasting a few minutes. Uh, goes back to my dad and, and, and his folks, even before him. They were all coon hunters. Uh, my dad, you know, loved to coon hunt, but, you know, being he worked shift workers very seldom, he could. And he wouldn't coon hunt uh, in the spring and in the summer because the old mama coons, had babies, and he was afraid if he killed one to come home and barbecue it, uh, he might leave some babies without a mama, so he wouldn't do it. Fall and winter was good months to coon hunt. Now, during the summer, we'd run coons out of our cornfield. That was okay to run them. You know, we'd go out with our dogs at night, and coons would be in our cornfield tearing the corn up, bad as hogs almost. Well, not quite as bad as hogs, and we'd run them coons off. But when I was a little boy, uh, I don't know, probably seven or eight years old, uh, and my brother, you know, four years older than I, and my dad and my uncle Marvin, who I'm named after, Marvin Eugene, yeah, Eugene, uh, they were going to go coon hunting one night. It's cold, winter night, winter night, cold, uh, and, and kind of cloudy, but it's just cold. You know, back then, you know, we, we, we knew all the landmarks. We knew in the woods where we were at, you might say. We'd, go, we'd hunt out there in the neighborhood, which is now several thousand acres. Several thousand. Bunch of acres. Bunch of thousands of acres. And we took our old dogs. We went out. And, and I'm little, so I'm trailing along behind them. My brother, only four years older than me. And uh, there's some old ponds out there. One is called First Pond. That's, that's the name they give it. It's the first one you come to. Old ponds might range anywhere from three or four acres, five acres, something like that, maybe 20, 25 acres, 30 acres, you know. They were just actually indentions that would hold water, most of them year-round. And all the animals would kind of congregate around them old ponds, you know, because all of them were in, like, low areas where it'd be oaks and stuff, be lots of acres and stuff like that, lots of food. Well, we went out to the first pond, didn't have much luck jumping nothing. Went out to second pond. And then third pond's a long ways forward. It was headed for third pond. And we got turned around. And there wasn't no stars out. It didn't have no compass. And we got kind of turned around. And my uncle wants to say, we got to go this way. But there's nothing. She's got to go this way. Well, we walked for a long time, guys. And it was cold. And dogs and trees a couple of times. We didn't we didn't take the coons because we didn't know exactly how long before we found our way out of there. Finally, my dad and my uncle decided we'd just build a fire and, and spend the night till the sun come up because it's cloudy. Hopefully, the sun come up, we can tell where the sun's at. Then we could know how to get out of there. And sure enough, we did. Built the fire. All four of us gathered up around that fire, huddled up there with our dogs, and slept through the night. Next morning, the sun come up enough that you could see where the east was and where the west. We knew if we go west, we could get out of there, so we did. It wasn't long before we hit some landmarks and knew where we was at. We headed home. Coon hunting was big. It was big. So as I grew up, uh, 
got grown, come back from the Marines, first thing I wanted to do is get me a coon dog. Well, coon dogs are like used cars. Different prices. The junky car is cheap. The better car is more, more money. There's a place there on at Humble, big sign out the road on the highway says Coon Hounds. So me and G one day we get in a truck and we drive down there. Kim was little. Lester was little, little, little. He little, little. And and sure enough, the guy had coon hounds out there staked out, tied to trees and everything else. Bunches of them. And I said, how much are your coon hounds? Well, young man, that know what there's this price. He's sort of naming prices off. Well, I couldn't afford nothing like that. So that's way above me. Well, I got... He didn't call it the economy model, but he pointed a little old dog over here tied up. And, and a little black and tan hound, but she's young. I could take 35 for her. $35 is a lot of money to us. And uh, I think at the time I was making like 100 a week. Yeah, a week. So I go back to the truck and I tell G, you got one for 35 So we started seeing how much money we had together that's probably grocery money 30 bucks ah, I'm thinking gosh should I I go back so look I, I got all all we got is 30 bucks <laughs> well, hey I'm not gonna miss a sale for 30 but five bucks go ahead and take her I paid him grocery money we loaded that little dog up and we took off I named her Sally good little dog young dog wasn't really a coon dog yet I started hunting her, hunting her. Well, Kim was about three, about like Carly, you know, about Carly's age. And she wanted to go, Daddy, Daddy, I'm going to go coon hunting, go coon hunting. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to follow that dog off them woods, and I got this little fat kid here that I'm going to probably end up carrying. Yeah, a little fat girl. Little short, little short, fat legs. <sighs> But, you know, what does a dad do? You know, so okay, Lester's too young to go. So her and I strike out in Sally. And sure enough, we would, wouldn't go far, and, and Kim started tiring out, and I'd walk so slow, Sally getting further and further away, even with your tree. And she learned how to tree. You know, that's when they get a coon up a tree, and they won't leave it. They bark, bark, bark till you get there. And uh, I wasn't out to kill them. I just wanted to tree them, you know, because... I, I didn't care to eat coon, but I have. My dad's barbecue. But uh, anyway, it ended up, I'd stop, sit on a log and let her rest, and then we'd get up, we'd go a little ways. We wouldn't go 100 yards. She said, I'm tired. I'm tired. Being a good daddy, I picked the little fat thing up, put her up on my shoulders. Thankfully, I had good legs. That's probably what's wrong with them now, carrying her. And I'm walking along holding one leg here on my arm, and it got my rifle in the other arm. The other hand, and she's swaying back and forth. My neck feel like it's going to break. <laughs> That's our coon hunting. And we did it once a week. Now Lester and Daniel got older. They loved a coon trap, and they were good at it. They could trap a coon. I think Lester caught 16 one summer, just in, just catching them. And I probably told that story before, but catching them, you know, and then we're eventually going to turn them loose if being the fur business didn't work out. But that's a different story. Y'all heard that before. But they were good trappers, good trappers. But they they reminded me of that little boy you see on that, if y'all ever seen that movie, Where the Red Fern Grows. They remind me of that kid when they were that age, just like, just like him. You know, that's where they talked. <laughs> they talked like that. They talked like hillbillies. Yeah, not, not me. But anyway, coon hunting was, was a lot of a lot of fun. Uh, we did it for years and years and years. Uh, I was building houses, and a man at the name of Ed would do my shingles for me. I'd build the house, dry it all in, and he'd come and do the shingles, and he was a coon hunter. Oh, Lord, he was a coon hunter. He had several good dogs. I'm talking about good dogs. And he told me one day, he said, I'd like to bring my dogs down and, and and go back behind your place with you and your dog. 
Uh, my dog was mediocre, but I loved her. I said, hey, she may learn some tricks from his dogs. And she was a pretty good dog. Sure, come on down, Ed. So we did. Ed come down, and we hunted a weeknight. I was building houses. I had to get up 5 o'clock next morning and take off to a job. Ed would hunt all night. I said, Ed, I got to get home, bud. I, I got to get some rest. Because Ed only worked the days he was doing shingles. You know, if somebody had a shingle job, he could just go home and sleep. So anyway, uh, we did that quite often. Finally, I told Ed one day, I said, Ed, I can go. We can go, but I'm going to be home by midnight. Got to be home by midnight. Well, you know, we kind of move on through life, and I went to work at the sheriff's department. And I'm over there off in kind of the Trinity River bottom land over one night on a call, and kind of not too far from Longhorn Lester's. And I'm coming down the highway, and I see this little truck coming up out of the woods. Coming up on out of the woods. And I had to slow down for him to get that because he pulled out in front of me. So, uh, probably drunk. Probably drunk. But then I realized, I think I know that truck. Yeah, that's the it. So I turned them red lights on. And he pulls over real quick. And now my PA. Step out of the truck with your hands up. <laughs> and he didn't know who I was. I got out and I started laughing at him. And we had a lot of fun out there on the highway talking and joking. And he had been coon hunting. He had to, on his way home, it was about 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you know, his wife told me that he hunted almost every night by himself. He'd take his dogs and hunt almost every night, you know. And if, if some nights he'd stay out almost all night, it might be almost daylight before he'd come home because he wasn't going to leave his dogs in the woods. If they got too far and he couldn't find them, he stayed. He stayed till he got his dogs back. Now, look, I'm trying to tell a story. You're wanting to fight. That's all you want to do is fight. So, anyway. All right, boys. No, do not chase Jake. Do not chase Jake. Kippy kind of got beat up today chasing Jake. It was Jake's dogs jumped on Kippy. Jake, stop. Both of you, stop right now. You get hurt. So, anyway. Uh, damn. Damn. Y'all stop. Uh, his wife said it. One night he didn't come home. She got up the next morning. He wasn't home. Because sometimes he come in real late. He'd just sleep on the couch. Well, he wasn't on the couch. The truck wasn't there. The dogs wasn't there. She said, oh, my goodness. So she called Sheriff's Department, I think. And I wasn't on duty that day or I was just somewhere else, whatever. I didn't get the call. But uh, some folks went out to where. He possibly was asked. Fire department, I think some volunteers went and they started looking for him. They found him in the woods, unconscious. Uh, thought he had a heart attack. He wasn't dead. He was alive, but uh, pretty cold. For, it was a cold night. His old dog was laid up there beside him and uh, got him to the hospital. And anyway, found out he was just exhausted. Exhaustion had just finally taken over. No sleep. Just you know, all night long and come home and sleep an hour or two, maybe go work or go do something else. Just Anyway, she made him uh, slow down. The coon hunt was, was big, in, it was big in our life as far as entertainment. Now, my dad would take a, a coon when he did shoot one, when he did harvest one, however you'll say it. An old coon, he would take it and clean it, and skin it and clean it and everything. And, and he would boil it first. For a, for a little while. Then he'd take it out, put sauce all on it, put it in the oven, and bake it. Uh, he he grew up on that. I, I never cared for it too much. I've eaten it. I've eaten it. And it wasn't like bad. It just wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't good like squirrel. Yeah, we've eaten squirrel. Some of you folks, are, oh, that's, that's what we see at the park. We've eaten them. We've eaten them. Uh, fried squirrel, squirrel and dumplings. Ooh, boy, it's almost as good as rabbit. But anyway, you can't beat fried rabbit. No, it's fried rabbit's better than chicken. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
Well, that's the way my dad would cook them. And sometimes I would I would get one for him and bring it home to him, and and that's how he'd do it. But you know, the boys are trapping. Uh, you could you only did it in the winter time. They'd have babies in the winter time, so it's okay to trap them in the winter time. You know, and you could trap them, and you could skin them out, and you could sell the skins in Cleveland. Uh, there's a fur buyer up there who bought furs, any kind of fur, rabbit furs, coons. Bobcat, coyotes, fox. And people come from all over with, with, with furs on a Saturday morning to sell them. Uh, but the meat, not to go to waste, you can sell a raccoon at a place called Pennington's Ice House. They, they, they sold raccoons there. Coons. And uh, I start saying raccoon, people think I'm crazy around here in East Texas. Oh, what's wrong with that boy? Where's he from? <laughs> Where's he from? But yeah, uh, but you had to leave one foot on them. One foot, because a raccoon has different kind of feet in there. And because people would clean one up, bring them in there and sell it. And sometimes they was trying to sell a alley cats and stuff. Sick. Sell a, a cat for a coon. Yeah. So they made you have to have one foot on him and you could sell him. And they pay you so much a pound. So, you know, you, you caught a, a pretty sized raccoon, you might get 15, 20 bucks for a skin, and you might get almost the same much, depending on how big it was, for the meat. Lots of folks did it. Lots of folks. But, you know, I loved, I loved coon hunting. Uh, it was just a, a joy to coon hunt. Uh, Kim stuck with me, you know, uh, all them years when I had to carry her little fat self and that once she got big enough, she didn't, she could walk, and she stopped coon hunting. <laughs> she graduated something else. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd come home, and my neck would hurt. My shoulders would hurt, and her riding on my back. She wasn't very tall, but she was pretty chunky. <laughs> pretty chunky. If she sees this, I'm going to be in so much trouble. And she knows it's true. She knows it's true. All right, that's just our little story about, about coon hunting. So I hope you enjoyed that. I got to take care of these dogs. Yourself. Close, and I'm going to tell you a story about my dad. You know, my dad grew up on this place here. And and those boys, they hunted. That's That was their meat supply. You know, they hunted for raccoons, they hunted for rabbits, they hunted for squirrels, they hunted deer hunters, they, uh, that was their meat supply, hogs. Uh, they, they hunted and, and butchered a bunch of hogs in their lifetime, you know, right out of the woods. And uh, my dad was telling me a story though about once he was coon hunting with a friend of his named Buster. Now Buster, was a drinker. My dad didn't drink. Buster did. Uh, and Buster came over, wanted to go coon hunting one night with my dad. And he's drinking. A little old flask of whiskey. He'd, done, he'd had probably several of them during the day, but he was, you know, but he wanted to go. And my dad liked Buster. So they head off down through the woods uh, with their dogs and, and lights. And sure enough, the dogs tree backing off, off the river somewhere and Buster walking along, stumbling along behind my dad, you know, and, <laughs> and they come up on this big cypress tree, big cypress, and they, they looking up there and they can see these eyes and dogs barking. All of a sudden, Buster throwed that, he throwed that bottle down, that little flask down and said, my God, run, drone. They called my dad, was Emory Jerome was his name. My God, Jerome, run, that's a bear. Because up there, there was eyes. I'm gonna try to show you here. With Kippy in my lap, hang on. Move over, Kip. This far apart. That's <laughs> that far apart. That <laughs> buster took off. What it was, there was two raccoons up there across, one on each side of that tree, and all you can see is one eye on each one of them, you know, off the side. 
Uh, my dad has told that story many a time and laughed at Buster. Yeah, Buster, he almost quit drinking that night. <laughs> he almost quit drinking that night. My God, Jerome runs a bear. <laughs> uh, but they grew up uh, hunting, living off the land. And uh, we, we did it for sport. You know, I mean, seriously, we, we didn't have to hunt. Uh, we did keep the coons out of our corn because it was our, our feed for, for our animals. And, but we didn't hunt them, we just run them out. And we've done the same with the hogs. But Dan's a deer hunter, Lester's hunted. Uh, I used to hunt and uh, I love squirrel hunting. Boy, I go squirrel hunting. <laughs> Tell you real quick about my squirrel hunting. The best, the best time I had squirrel hunting. I, out here in this neighborhood, it was just woods in, but there was a place. It was a big oak flat, probably 50 acres. So just right out in the middle of a big pine forest, just oak flat, and it was just thick. With little oak trees, acorns, by the millions, acorns. Every squirrel in five miles come to that place to eat. <laughs> well, I found it, and I could drive almost, almost to it. Uh, go down, hit the old uh, Cottonwood Road, go back in there, hit the pipeline, go down that pipeline a ways and park, and then walk for maybe a half a mile. And I'd go before daylight. I'd get up early, make me a thermos of coffee, and take off. Be real quiet. I have to get out of, out of my car. Y'all, stop wrestling, boys. My, see, it's this kind of stuff. It's this kind of stuff. What's wrong over there, baby? She said, I can't take it, Papa. I can't take it. I can't either. And I'd walk down there at the end of that oak flat and find me a place, and I'd just sit down beside a tree in the dark and drink my coffee and start getting daylight. And they start getting daylight, and little squirrels come alive. They're everywhere. I mean, they're everywhere. And you could almost sit underneath that tree and get as many as you wanted. Uh, I'm serious. You could get seven or eight of them, and I'd, I'd, that's plenty. I'd come home, and G and I, I'd be home at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'd skin squirrels. And she'd fry some that day. She might make dumplings out of some. Some go in the freezer. Yeah, good old days. <laughs> Nowadays, I look at them, and I enjoy watching them. Just watching them. Watching them play. Yep. Time's changed, don't they? <laughs> guys, we're fixing to go home. It's fixing to get late down here. Uh, these guys, all they want to do is wrestle. This is all they want to do. And I'm trying to swing and relax and tell you guys a story. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you subscribe to my channel. Hope you share with a friend, neighbor, or relative, or somebody that you won't mind losing if they don't like it. <laughs> and hit the like button. I love you guys. Y'all take care.